So Mikel Arte is set to level up his squad this summer with Athletic reporting Arsenal are going to make three to four signings this transfer window. Mikel wants at least 17 players he can trust from the 14 trusted players he had last season. In this summer, Arsenal want to add the likes of Eberechi Eze, Javi Simons, Nico Williams, Victor Jokores, and even Joshua Kimmich. So the question, how do Arsenal set up with such players? The interesting part is that Mikel Arte could have around two very good starting 11s next season and that that would be very, very scary. For the Champions League and the Premier League, Arsenal want to go all the way. And obviously, in the FA Cup and Carabao Cup, Mikel Arta has not taken those trophies as serious. But you never know, with around 20 players that are quality in the squad, Arsenal could have two starting 11s to compete on all fronts. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This is how Arsenal set up with the new targets that we are looking to bring in in july so in goal i think it will keep to be david dreyer honestly he's not yet signed from brentford uh, so we can count him as a new signing but i think very very short uh, very very soon he will actually come in uh, as our new goalkeeper after the URS. david dreyer has been a reliable goalkeeper uh, for us i wouldn't truly really say um we need any changes although i love aaron ramsdale i think Dreyer owns and merits the reason uh, as to why he is in goal. Now, I won't be surprised if Arsenal bring in a real quality goalkeeper to back up David Dreyer, but that won't be because Raya is not trusted or is not good enough. It will be because of the competitive nature of Mikel Arta and Arsenal these days. We want to bring in players that can you know, push each other, compete with each other. The way Raya and Ramsdale have been pushing each other, I think Arsenal will go to, uh, you know, a club like Feyenoord or PSG, PSV, sorry, and bring in, you know, a goalkeeper from there. We also want players like... Um, you know, Steele at Brighton. Steele is a very good goalkeeper. But with David Dreyer, I think we have a goalkeeper we can trust in the Premier League, but also a goalkeeper we can trust in the UEFA Champions League. He's played one game for Spain in the Euros, did make a couple of saves in those uh, in that one against Albania. And I would say uh, the three saves he made that were really solid brought out the real reason why Arsenal signed him in the first place for Brentford. So he's going to cost around 27 million uh, this summer from Brentford. Everything is done. Andrea will be Arsenal's number one come next season now Mikel Arte doesn't trust anyone at left back that is one of the uh, problems we have with his starting 11 he doesn't trust anyone at left back and I now struggle to see Julian Tima playing at left back um, with more reports claiming especially today from the uh, Guardian that Arsenal would love to sign a new left back so at left back I'm going to be very, very you know, intrigued to see who comes in. But we're going to go with Mark Gehi. Now, Arsenal have been linked with Mark Gehi for quite some time now. And he's one of the very, very interesting defenders uh, already in the Premier League. Crystal Palace want around 50 million for him. And I think Arsenal can do that. Arsenal can make that deal happen. Remember when we wanted Ben White and we didn't know that Ben White was coming in to play uh, at right back? We all thought Ben White was coming in as a centre-back next to Gabriel. Tried that for one season, didn't really work out, uh, you know, and then when it turned, it was turned into right back, it actually turned out. Now, what Mikel Arte is looking for in a player like Magehi is he wants someone who's got a very strong left foot, like Josko Givadio, can go all the way and can bomb that, you know, bomb down that line um, and go and create chances, but also defensively uh, as very solid. The problem with Julian Timber is he's so solid defensively and very good on the ball. But when you think about left-sided defenders and left-sided uh, or left-footed players Julian Timba is not a left-footed player he's actually a right-footed player who will be playing out of posi a position uh, you know on the left hand side so I won't be surprised to see Julian Timba given another role probably coming in as um a backup player to uh, you know to Saliba a backup player to Ben White well asked to sign a new left back for next season so for me i've gone with mark Gehi here and i think again this would give arsenal very interesting depth this would give arsenal very interesting um options imagine having Gehi starting for arsenal and then you have kivio tomiyasu or even alexander Zichenko on the bench you have timber who can uh, play there he can come in and change the game entirely arsenal would be very different but also arsenal would be very you know interesting now across the back line I struggle to see many changes uh, right here, but this is what I'm going to say. 
because uh, Julian Timber is not at the Euros and Ben White is not at the Euros as well, we might see a little bit of a change. So I'm going to go with Julian Timber at right back, although um, I still think that Ben White will be the main right back for Arsenal uh, last, uh, next season, like he was last season. He was amazing purely purely entertaining stuff uh from you know fr from ben white but i i really see julian timber as an important player in this arsenal team the way john stones is deployed at man city sitting into um into uh that back line but then inverting into the midfield and sitting uh you know around there near declan rice um and and maybe Jorginho in between there or just on the right hand side uh of either of them now why i think Timba is going to be a very important player for us the next season is the absence of Thomas Partey and also the fact that Jorginho cannot play 38 games in a campaign why um I don't think I don't think Partey uh, sorry I don't think Declan Rice is as comfortable uh, on the ball uh, breaking through the lines the way you see a player like Julian Timber does um, and Julian Timber in this case can be referred to as a Jujino can be referred to as a Tony Cruz can be referred to as a Lodry now these players are very gifted in position and they're very good on the ball especially in very uh, in very um, uncomfortable situations so that, that's why I think that Timber will play for us next season, maybe on the right, maybe on the left, but we're going to see him, uh, you know, a lot of him moving to the midfield and helping out Arsenal build attacks, something you cannot do with Declan Rice. Now, um, as we start the season, we will see, uh, you know, we will see one player, and that player will be uh, Ben White playing on the right hand side of, um, uh, of, of the defense. Why? Because William Saliba is going to go deep in the Euros, like France will go deep, there's no question about that. Um, and of course, Gabriel as well is a player that will go a little bit deeper with Brazil, but I think Gabi is a player that I see come back and, you know, start for Arsenal right away. So I'm not dropping Saliba, I'm just saying that um, as the season starts, you will see maybe Saliba getting some rest, uh, you know, because he's been playing for... Uh, because he's been, he's been playing for um um he's been playing for 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 France and then you might see something like that but obviously the back four uh next season is more likely to be uh white saliba gabriel and a new signing like McGehy. so that would be my uh i, I wouldn't really mind this kind of uh back line in order to start the season as some players get rest and some players get uh you know uh, some refreshing minutes uh away from football from the euros saliba getting some rest uh from the euros and even i won't be surprised if a player like tomiasu plays uh you know at center back as gabriel magales is not yet ready back um to play in the team now I'm not making many changes to uh, the defense. Most of the players that are put in there have been there, but more changes are now coming in the midfield. So how do we fit in Kimmich and Rice and Odegaard and then, um, and then players like, you know, Javi Simmons and all the others? So I think with Kimmich, there's no question here. If Arsenal played a system that Mikel Atta likes, which is more likely uh, a 4-3-3, Joshua Kimmich is definitely as part of the midfield. So let's change. Uh, okay. Let's get Kimmich. Joshua Kimmich in midfield. For me, Kimmich starts ahead of many, many players at Arsenal. Like many, many players at Arsenal, really. Um, and why I think he does that is when you, when I, when you think about him and you think about what Arsenal don't have right now, um, you don't have a reliable Thomas Partey, and you don't have a brave Declan Rice. So you have to you have to combine you have to combine Declan Rice's availability and durability plus Partey's technical ability on the ball and his brave nature um, in terms of you know turning into the midfield and progressing the ball and breaking through the lines to get a player like uh, Yoshio Kimmich. So Kimmich is the hybrid between those two. The hybrid between. Declan Rice, the hybrid between uh, Rice and Partey. And I actually think Kimmich makes Rice better and Kimmich makes uh, Odegaard better. Why? Kimmich would play 38 games in a season. We all know that. So alongside him there in that pivot, alongside him is your boy Rice. 
So that is where Declan Rice comes in. Your boy Declan Rice will be playing alongside Kimmich, and I think Kimmich will play every single game uh, for Arsenal unless the manager decides to rest him. So let's get Declan Rice there in the starting eleven. So Rice there, Kimmich there as well. That would be my dream, uh, you know, dream midfield. Okay, that would be my dream, dream, dream midfield. I, I wouldn't really change that. I wouldn't change, the, change that. That would be my pivot. Rice very good um, in terms of adding the energy to the midfield. Kimmich adding that level of experience and that uh, being that 100, 200 uh, touchman uh, for Arsenal. Uh, of course, uh, still as part of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the attack and the midfield, I would have two players um, on the flanks, right? So on the flanks, it's quite interesting. I think Saka is, uh, Saka is a no-brainer. He, he starts whenever he's fit. Um, and this is not because we are Arsenal fans. This is because he's good. So Saka starts, uh, you know, uh, on the right wing. Uh, I think there are very, very few people who would actually disagree with that. Bukayo Saka starting for Arsenal on the right wing. I hope, this, I, I, hope I don't mess up this, right? Okay. Saka, right wing. Who is this? Let's get Saka. Let's get Saka. Okay, um, Saka on the right wing. Now, this is quite interesting because I've just selected a player. I don't know how he's come here, but I don't know what they're called. So, we'll remove them. So, we go with Saka, right? We go with Bukai Saka on the right. Um, and then we go with um, Williams on the left because I think that is where Mikel Arteta wants to level up uh, in terms of the, the left hand side he wants to add a left back that really can play at left back and then he wants to play a right winger that he can trust so I think we'll see more changes on the left hand side uh, than on the right hand side for Arsenal You'll see Bukayo Saka on the left, on the right wing, and you see Nico Williams on the left, uh, on the left wing. Kimmich and Declan Rice definitely um, in that midfield pivot. Now, for me, the advantage with this, um, and I think many people will be very, very unpleased with this, but the advantage with having Williams in that team alongside Saka. Look at that partnership. Look at uh, what Saka does on the ball, and then you look at what Williams does on the ball. Very, very threatening that is a big threat why i would leave out gabriel martinelli for the beginning of the uh, for the first part is um i think martinelli eventually grows into um kind of a forward you know if, eventually i think he, you know he grows into a forward but even if he doesn't um i don't think williams would play all games still uh would we'll see we'll, we'll get to see him in other games now uh this is not to suggest that odegaard would play as a striker but um you have seen Odegaard kind of uh, press up front. So I would have Odegaard still in that number 10 role. Um, and when we are out of position, him pressing with... Now, there's Javi Simons and um, Victor Jokarez. But for me, I would go with Victor Jokarez right here. I would go with Victor Jokarez. This is the player that I really, really like. So Jokarez there. Uh, Victor Jokarez. I hope they have him. They do. They do. They do. They do. Center forward. Okay. Victor Jokarez. There you go. So, Jokarez, Kimmich, Williams, and Gehi, uh, that would be a very good starting eleven. However, uh, there are times where Arsenal might not... Um, you want to rotate Declan Rice... So when you want to rotate Rice, this is where a player like Eze comes in. So Eze could also play in that role in terms of uh, versatility from Crystal Palace. So you'd play Eze next to Kimmich. Eze could play in that kind of eight role. Oh, you might want to play um, Javi Simons. And you want to rest Odegaard. So that's where Javi Cap Simmons comes in. S scores a lot of goals. The difference between him and and and, um, and Odegaard is Odegaard doesn't look to score as many. Um, he looks to create many. 
And then Javi Simons doesn't look to create many. He looks to score many as well. So I think if Mikel Arteta manages to pull off these four to five signings, one thing he's going to get is a lot of squad depth, but also players he can trust, players that he can, um, you know, trust to bring in in a game that is still... You can bring on Williams in a game that is still. You can bring on Eze and changes the game. Uh, I think Jokeris can change the game. I also think that, uh, you know, players like Magehi can change the game. Now, if um, we are playing in the FA Cup, and Mikel doesn't want to start every single member of the, uh, the, the starting eleven. what he can do, he can now play, um, you know, a second eleven, And uh, this would be kind of uh, our scan second eleven. You have Javi Simmons there, Victor Yoker is in there, Nico Williams in there, Eze in there, uh, you know, Gehi in there, and then a couple of players that have not included, uh, you know, into the second 11. But you can see the whole picture. You can see why Mikelata is dying to get at least three, four signings this summer to level up the squad. And I think it's a wonderful idea um, if we're going to catch up with Man City. That is how they built a dynasty for Pep Guardiola. They, they have they have around six, seven, eight defenders. The midfielders, how many do they have? Around what nine midfielders, even with players um, from the academy included, and their attack is also unbelievable.